In today's video, we reveal the secrets of the black gold in Assetto Corsa Competizione. Welcome to the fourth episode of the Real Beginner's Guide and today's episode will dive a little bit deeper after the first three parts where we covered, uh, you know, all the generic uh, things that you need to watch out for and that can help you get into sim racing. It is now time to really take a look at, you know, the different aspects and actually the most important aspects of a card that can help you improve and get faster. If you haven't done so far, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel to not miss any upcoming videos and also catch me live on stream to ask me questions and have a good time with me. So if you have already watched part 3 of the Real Beginner Guide, uh, you know that we dive into the aggressive preset setup and how you can learn a racetrack and get faster and you know how to practice um, not the right way, but like giving you my tips and insights on how you can practice to get faster and feel more comfortable in your car. And um, now it's time to take the next step because um, I shared all the basics with you. Uh, it's now up to you to practice, you know, and improve your feeling and get faster. But um, it's now the time to dive deeper into uh, a little bit of the setup and the most important aspect of the setup that you need to be aware of and need to get under control is the tires in Assetto Corsa Competizione. And, uh, you know, as professionals call it, the black gold of racing. Now the tire model, the tire physics in Assetto Corsa Competizione are in my opinion the best in all uh, racing simulations they are incredible and with the current uh, 2020 dlc and also the 1.6 patch update that brought the 2020 season we got the new 2020 dhe tire compound from pirelli into the game and this new tire compound has a lot of improvements for example um, it will you know keep the heat in the tires better it would you know the whole tire will actually um, heat up much better develop the grip much better and is much easier to control with tire pressures and really better to handle but it needs at least two three or even four laps to you know come on temperature and develop the full grip to be able to kind of you know get a feeling for the car and uh, you know manage your tire pressures and uh, adapt your setup for it Now, after watching part 3 and me, you know, showing you a little bit of the base aggressive setup with adapting tire pressures, you might think, okay, but um, what, what, what's there to know about tires? I mean, I just, you know, drive a few laps, um, adapt the tire pressures, and then I'm, I'm ready to race. That's it. But um, Assetto Corsa Competizione being a, a full-fledged racing simulation, the, the tire model, the tire physics, the, the whole simulation about the black gold of racing is so realistic and so detailed that if you want to get uh, a little bit deeper and uh, you know understand more uh, how the tire pressures work how the heat uh, the warming up of the tires works how the grip works you will definitely have an easier time practicing and getting faster so today i want to explain you a bit more how it actually works how you heat up the tires how you get them on temperatures what does it mean in the setup the details that you see there and how you can manage tire pressures and what you need to be aware of when you are changing certain aspects of the setup and get on track to practice. Now the HUD in the game is a really good uh, way to look at that and uh, I think this is something that Kunos does uh, really good with the HUD in game that it shows you all four tires with all four brake discs the temperatures and the pressures of the tires and temperatures of the brake discs there. So um, when we talk about the optimum pressure being somewhere between 27.5 and 27.8 tires, look around like that, green with a good temperature, everything is looking good. You see that the full surface and the tire is actually, you know, really nice shape with the full surface uh, grip on the tarmac. and. Um, what might happen is it looks like this when you don't have enough pressure in the tires which most of the time happens in colder conditions your tire not coming on temperatures indicated by you know 
a dark blue or light blue color and what you see is that the tire kind of looks hollow the shape is somehow uh, bent to the inside with the middle of the tire not being able to grip the tarmac and this means that you just have grip on the inside and outside of the tire and the other way around is when the tire maybe heats up too much or you put up too much pressure the tire kind of blows up looking like a balloon and in this case the red color indicates it's too hot the tire is overheating you have too much pressure and the middle is only gripping the tarmac this is also not the way we want to go and not a good tire pressure to have so definitely not overheat the tires and not have them too cold always find the middle ground of nice green saturated tires in the hut with around 27.5 and 27.8 of tire pressures now in terms of heat and temperature the setup screen uh, gives you a really nice indication once you have done a few laps and you also saw the IMO markings that I've shown you now on the hut which is for inside middle and outside of the tire and if you go in the tire tab in your setup screen you have as well for every one of the four tires the inside middle and outside temperatures you have the hot tire pressures uh, you can also check in the tab for fuel and strategy how much wear your tire has meaning how much of the profile depth is still left even though we are racing slick tires you have tiny little holes that mark um, the depth of uh, a usual profile that you have on a road tire so that you know how much of the rubber is gone and fresh tire has three millimeters with this option the game actually indicates you how much of the tire has already been consumed but you don't really need to worry about that because it's usually easily uh, recommended to uh, get down to approximately like 1.5 or even just one millimeter and that's just like really um, a long time at least like uh, depending on current setup up to two hours of racing so um, that's just a good thing to know the screen under fuel and strategy also shows if you have you know any flat spot or grain or blisters meaning when you for example lose control and you're spinning and your tires are your brakes are kind of locking up you will uh, have flat spots on your tires or uh, maybe grain or even due to overheating some blisters so this is not good so here you have an indication if you're doing something wrong if you're overheating the tires or if you spun your car and have a flat spot you will feel that while driving and it's also important to then change your tires Now with the uh, explanation of the screens out of the way, you might be thinking, okay, temperatures, pressures, that's just too much. I can only regulate the pressures. How do I regulate uh, temperatures? And that's uh, depending on a few different factors. For example, we can regulate toe and camber in the setup screen. And in the beginning, I just recommend you don't worry about these values, just go with them from the aggressive preset. And what the toe and camber does, it's actually the angle of the tire in relation to the tire mark. For example, camber is always a negative value to like um, have the tires look more to the inside so that uh, the grip of the tire is when going straight only on the inside of the tire. But the reason why we have like a negative camber to have like the tires leaning more to the inside is that when you go in turns, and you know you turn in the car and the weight balance shifts a little bit always to the outside that the camber then makes it that the tire can grip again the whole of the tarmac with its surface because a tire is always moving because of the rubber it's never really stiff so it can adapt and it will change its shape to hug the tarmac even more and that's what the camber does it helps you to go faster through turns and have the car more grip on the inside and on the outside turn the other thing is the toe and that's actually the angle of the tire when you look from the bottom or the top of the car if you want to even go a tiny bit deeper into the setup for tires it's an easy way to adapt the camber of front and rear tires if you look at the IMO temperatures you will see the inside middle and outside temperature differences and they can have a huge variance and it is most of the time a good idea if you keep like two or even a maximum of three degree temperature difference between inside 
the middle and the outside. Summing up in total, you should not have more than 10 degrees temperature difference between inside and outside of the tire. So this is a really good indicator for you that if you see like the inside is a 95 degrees, but the outside is only like um, 80 degrees, you have like 15 degrees difference. So you already can uh, see you have too much negative camber. So you can change it by a few clicks on the positive side to have, you know, a better temperature development across the whole surface of the tire being able to control the temperature and the pressures much much easier and you know also conserve more of the tire and have a better tire life. So as you can see it's actually a lot of experimenting and practicing until you have like a really good balance of tire pressure. So I recommend you when you do your practice sessions always do at least five six or even seven laps to really heat up the tires and then go back to the pits to see how was the imo temperatures um, and how was uh, the tire wear and the tire pressures and then you know just adjust it a little bit the pressures if the heat is okay and then go out to another six seven or even eight laps to see um, if the tire pressures keep the balance you know just be mindful that pressures will not stay the same like if you aim for like a 27.6 or 27.7 they will um, fluctuate over a lap because you have more braking less braking left turns right turns so there's always a different kind of load on the tires so it's always good to set up the pressures in a way that it you know stays in the window between 27.5 and 27.8 so always do your best to kind of balance this and keep an eye on during your practice laps uh, on the tire hut if the tires always stay like green on optimum temperature and if the tire pressure is between the optimum window. And to make your life easier you should then always save the setup with a correct file name. So I always add a version number like v1, v2, v3 and then I add air and track temperature meaning an a 20 degrees t 30 degrees this will help you when you join a race and you have a different kind of temperature to easily and quickly adapt the tire pressures which is my rule of thumb for example if you have 10 degrees difference for example your setup is for 30 degrees and then you go on the track and it just has a 20 degree track temperature uh, means you have 10 degrees difference means you have 10 degree less so you need more pressure because it's a little bit colder so you use five clicks so for every two degrees difference it is one click either up or one click either down and in most of the cases this works really well it's just that in like really crazy temperature differences for example your setup is for 40 degrees and you're racing at night in 10 degrees it's like 30 degree difference so 15 clicks and the tires won't make it there because you need to change the brake ducts and this is just something you need to kind of practice and experiment that if it's colder you close down the brake ducts but then you don't need to increase tire pressure that much because they will retain the heat more easily so always like kind of practice in different temperature conditions get a feeling for it and have maybe a few different setups with tire pressures as a preset so that you can just quickly adapt and adjust and are ready to race now all of this of course has been regarding dry tire sets and the dry setup so what about if it starts raining? What shall you do with wet tires and tire pressures? So if you ever join a lobby and uh, it's pouring down, it's wet and uh, you want to have a wet race, I recommend you just use the wet preset setup. It's always most of the time a really good solution. It has everything set up of the car to be, uh, you know, a bit of a smoother and better performance for you. Of course, you have to be careful in the rain, but then tire pressures for wet tires are a total different story it's not around 27.5 you want to aim for a tire pressure with wet tires of around 30 psi and it's really easy to overheat wet tires or blow them up too much so really um, also practice wet tire sessions in single player to get a few of the pressures you know balanced and set up and saved in a preset 
to be on the safe side. But if you go with the wet preset setup, there is nothing really uh, you can do wrong. Just also make sure that maybe if it's too cold, you close the brake ducts a tiny bit and then just, you know, balance the tire pressure to be around um, 30 PSI and make sure that you have traction control and ABS higher up that you are not overheating the tires. Now an even trickier situation is uh, if you ever come on a racetrack in greasy or damp conditions, meaning it might be drizzling a tiny bit but the track is somehow a little bit wet but maybe not, you can see a dry line and that's really tricky because it's whether that you don't use a wet tire setup. You can maybe use a wet preset for the car because again it's a bit easier and more balanced for the colder and greasy damp conditions but you will have to use dry tires you will have to use slicks on a track that's greasy that's as slippery that's not completely dry because in a race it will dry up and you will have a drier ideal race line that you need to look out for that you need to stick to and you need to avoid the curbs but the problem you have then with the slick tires is you will not get them on optimum temperature. They will stay blue and cold for most of the time. And what that means is you need to compensate that with much, much more tire pressure. So if you ever find yourself in these conditions like I had before, you need to pump up your tire pressures to most of the time uh, 29 or even 30 or 31 PSI before leaving the pits. And of course, this is all absolutely depending on what's the track and air temperature. But most of the time in greasy and slippery and damp conditions, it's pretty cold. And even if it is 20 or 30 degrees, the tires are still struggling to come on temperature and you need to compensate with a much, much higher pressure. And don't be afraid, just really push it up, blow up the tires to 30, 31 PSI because within the first two laps they will cool down incredibly and lose a lot of pressure. But still, it is important to balance them around 25 27.5 to 27.8 to have as much surface grip as possible. A good trick in these damp and slippery greasy conditions is to maybe close the brake ducts even more to like only two to retain much more heat in the brakes and the rims and suspension to like try and generate and get more of the heat into the dry tires in these conditions. But always be careful because depending on the track and how much and how hard you have to brake, uh, it can be that you start overheating the brakes and then absolutely lose brake performance. So this was the beginner crash course, the secrets of the black gold in Assetto Corsa Competizione lifted. I hope I could answer all the questions around tires, tire pressures and tire heat. Uh, if not, just leave a comment below, ask all your questions, uh, let me know how you like the video. And again, I would really much appreciate it if you just follow the channel, click the little subscribe button, maybe hit the sub notification bell that you do not miss any of the next upcoming parts of my sim racing beginner guide and as well my live streams you can catch me uh, nearly every week uh, live uh, racing community races so you are very welcome to just jump in have some fun uh, ask me anything you want to know live on stream if you enjoyed this part hit the thumbs up to help me and support the channel a little bit and uh, i hope i see you soon stay safe take care thanks for watching bye bye